How you doing guys? Welcome to another episode. This is still Topic 4, Volume 5, and probably the most important volume for Topic 4, Intermolecular Forces. Let's go. So, Volume 5, Intermolecular Forces, we need to talk about dipole-dipole interactions, London dispersion forces, and identify hydrogen bonding. The IB understandings and applications focus around this intermolecular forces concept. We need to be able to understand the relative strengths of those intermolecular forces for London dispersion forces being weak, all the way to hydrogen bonding being strong, we will discuss. We need to be able to deduce the types of forces present in molecules and then explain them in terms of their structure. So we've considered bonding within a molecule, intramolecular bonding, now we must consider bonding between two or more molecules. And an easy way to think of this is about your school sport. So if you play school sport about with people in your own school, you're playing intra-school sport. Now for molecules, bonding inside the molecule is called intramolecular bonding. So that's bonding internally between the atoms in the molecule. So the types that we've, we've covered so far in this topic are things like polar covalent bonds or non-polar covalent bonds. They could also be things like ionic bonds or metallic bonds, but they're bonding inside the molecule. When you play sport versus other schools, we call that inter-school sport. For molecules, that's bonding between different molecules, and we call that intermolecular bonding. So we've got one molecule and its attraction to another molecule. What is their attraction? That's called the intermolecular force. And there's a number of different types of intermolecular forces, which we'll discuss in a minute. So remember those two little analogies, sport versus students in your own school is intra, sport versus someone else, inter. So the definition of a dipole, we covered this in the last video, but just to make it clear, a dipole is formed when we have two non-metal atoms having a covalent bond with a difference in electronegativities, and when that's not distributed symmetrically, we form a dipole. Dipole-dipole attraction is the attraction of two polar molecules to each other, where one of the positively charged ends is attracted to the negatively charged end of another molecule. The strength of this attraction depends upon the distance and the orientation of those dipoles. Generally, we say that dipole-dipole forces are stronger than London dispersion forces. The dipole-dipole forces, the strength is in the middle. So we have the attraction between a negatively charged dipole, the end, to another positively charged dipole, and that is our dipole-dipole interaction. So for example, hydrogen chloride, HCl. Hydrogen has the partial positive charge, chlorine the partial negative charge. If we had a sample of these, we would have an, a number of HCls in this sample. Each of them will have the same positive and negative, and what will happen is they will tend to line themselves up so that they're attracted to the other oppositely charged atom. So the chlorines will have a dipole-dipole interaction with the hydrogen on another molecule. So we get this dipole-dipole bonding which takes place throughout the whole sample and that has impacts on its melting point and its boiling point. Another example of this might be hydrogen bromide, HBr. Again, the hydrogen will have that partial positive charge, the bromine the partial negative charge, and here I've tried to show some stacking that there would be this three-dimensional representation of these molecules where they're bonded to the oppositely charged dipole via a dipole-dipole interaction. So that's polar molecules. So we've discussed polar molecules and many molecules are polar, but what about those molecules that aren't polar? the ones that don't have a permanent dipole, like carbon dioxide, they're nonpolar. So for a nonpolar molecule, the only intermolecular force that exists is called London dispersion forces. And these are the weakest type of intermolecular forces. 
They're formed from what we call instantaneous dipoles and they're extremely significant for non-polar molecules because they're the only type of force. So a chlorine molecule has two chlorine atoms with a covalent bond. They've got the same electronegativity, so we would say that this is a non-polar covalent bond. That means it doesn't have a dipole, it's non-polar. But what can happen is we can induce a dipole. So if we have the chlorine molecule, the two electrons would be evenly distributed between those two chlorines. But at some instant in time, those bonding pair of electrons might be closer to one of the chlorine atoms. In that case, we have induced a dipole because one of the chlorines has a greater share of those electrons in the bond, so it forms a partial negative charge. It's induced a negative charge. That leaves the other end to be partially positively charged because the electrons are further away. And we call this the formation of an instantaneous dipole. So if we have a large sample of chlorine molecules and one of them induces a dipole, that induction can spread between the other molecules. And we can have the buildup of these induced dipoles which spreads through our sample. So we get this buildup of positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative due to the movement of the electrons. This is the formation of London dispersion forces and the interaction between those induced dipoles, the negative and the positive, is our weak London dispersion forces. Because the electrons are always moving, these can move around, so it might not always be in the same location, and that gives them the weak attraction. So weak meaning they can be easily broken and it doesn't take much temperature to break those bonds. London dispersion forces act on every molecule. So every molecule has electrons and London dispersion forces will be present in every molecule. But they are the most important type of intermolecular bonding for non-polar molecules. It's the only thing that's holding non-polar -mo non molecules together. If we have a look at a bit of an example of some non-polar molecules, we have the halogens. And you can see here that as we go down the group, down group 17, the melting point and the boiling point of those halogens starts to increase. They all only have one type of attraction, the London dispersion forces. So how can those melting and boiling points change? Well, there's two reasons. One is as we go down the group, the molecules have more electrons. The greater the amount of electrons, the greater the induction of those dipoles. So the, the greater the size those dipoles become. So as the number of electrons increases in a molecule, so does the strength of the intermolecular force of dispersion forces, weak dis, uh, London dispersion forces. Another way we can think of this is the molar mass. As the molar mass of a molecule gets bigger, so do the London dispersion forces. So the bigger the molar mass, the stronger those London dispersion forces. The third type of intermolecular bonding is probably the most important and it is hydrogen bonding and it's a special case of dipole-dipole bonding. This can only occur between three things, fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen, especially when they're combined with a hydrogen. So the molecule to have hydrogen bonding must have N bond H, O bond H or H bond F. They are the three conditions. The reason for this is there's a big difference in electronegativity between NH, OH and FH and the, the non-bonding electrons that are present on the N, the O and the F allow for this special type of dipole-dipole interaction. Don't be fooled, the word hydrogen bond is describing the bond between two molecules. It's not describing the NH bond, it's describing the attraction of a hydrogen to a neighboring nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine and its lone pair. So it's, it's not the intermolecular bond, the intramolecular bond, it's the intermolecular bond between two molecules. So the hydrogen attracted to the lone pair of another molecule's O, N, and F. And this hydrogen bond, remember, refers to the intermolecular bonding between two different molecules. 
So for a molecule to have hydrogen bonding, it must have NH, OH, or HF, and then it can form hydrogen bonds. So the strength of the intermolecular bonding is as follows. London dispersion forces are the weakest type of intermolecular forces. Dipole-dipole forces sort of sit in the middle, and then the hydrogen bonds are the strongest type of intermolecular forces. Just a little note, another term the IB generally use is the term van der Waals forces. And van der Waals forces is an inclusive term which includes dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces. So if something is polar and it undergoes dipole-dipole forces, you could say that it has van der Waals forces, which includes your London dispersion forces. So here we have three molecules, all very similar in terms of the number of carbons and we can decide which one has the greatest amount of intermolecular bonding by looking at the structure. So the first one, we would have carbons in the middle surrounded by hydrogens. This is a non-polar molecule. Non-polar molecules can only exhibit London dispersion forces. So that one will have the weakest London dispersion forces. The one in the middle, which is an aldehyde, and we'll cover those in topic 10. It has a dipole. It's got a large region of positive charge, all of the hydrogens, but then it has this oxygen, which will have a negative charge. So it has a dipole. It's only a small one, but it has a dipole. So we would say that this is a polar molecule. Now, because it's a polar molecule, it will exhibit dipole-dipole interactions. But remember, it will also have London dispersion forces as well. They will act on it too. So we could say that this has van der Waals forces to include those two terms. The final one with four carbons and a carboxy group, that has an O bond H. Now, O bond H is typical of an alcohol or an acid, and that gives us our hydrogen bonding. So we see the O bond H, so that means this molecule must contain some hydrogen bonding, and that's between another molecule, not in the molecule. It will exhibit hydrogen bonding between the molecules. So it will have hydrogen bonding and dispersion forces, and that means it will be the strongest of the intermolecular forces, so it will probably have the highest melting and boiling temperature. The first one with the weak London dispersion forces, it would have the lowest melting and boiling temperature. Okay, so a few more examples using some molecules. If you've done topic 10, this will make a little bit more sense. If not, I'm just going to help draw them for you. So methoxymethane can undergo dipole-dipole inter interactions, and we might need to describe that. So methoxymethane has a structure that looks a little bit like this. We have a carbon with three hydrogens, which is bonded to an oxygen, and then it repeats on the other side. So this is a symmetrical molecule. Now, according to the electronegativities, the hydrogens will all be slightly positively charged and the oxygen with its lone pair of electrons will be slightly negative charged. So this has a dipole. It's got a positive end, which is kind of at the top, and then it has this region of positive charge down the bottom. So it has a dipole, which means it is polar. So if we have a sample of these molecules, those polar molecules are going to be attracted to each other via the dipole-dipole interaction. And the way that it will work is the hydrogens on one molecule will be attracted to the lone pair of electrons of an oxygen on another molecule. So if I was asked to show that, I would need to draw two molecules. And here I'm going to show that the, the CH3, the hydrogens, are attracted to the lone pair of electrons on a neighbouring oxygen atom. So a neighbouring meaning, you know, another molecule next door. This will give us the dipole-dipole interaction. It's an attraction between the hydrogens of one molecule to the oxygen of another molecule. We draw dotted lines to indicate that it's not a covalent bond, but it's a partial bond between those two molecules. So it's the hydrogen and the lone pairs of oxygen on another molecule, giving us the dipole-dipole interaction.
We just need to talk a little bit about solubility and a covalent molecule will be sol soluble in a solvent is it, if it is able to form bonds with the solvent. And generally there's two types of solvents. We have polar solvents like water and ethanol and non-polar solvents like hexane or oil. Chemists have the saying like dissolves like, so polar molecules will dissolve, will dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar molecules will dissolve in non-polar solvents. Water is an excellent solvent. It's a very polar molecule. It has a large dipole. That large dipole enables it to form two types of bonds with solutes. Solutes are the things that can be dissolved in a solvent. It could form dipole-dipole attractions with molecules, or it could form hydrogen bonds. The large dipole also allows it to pull apart ionic compounds because it will have an iron dipole interaction. The iron coming from the positively charged metal and then the dipole being the oxygen or the hydrogen. So water is a really good solvent because of those properties. Another molecule that is polar is ethanol and ethanol has a similar ability to dissolve things as water. Ethanol can dissolve in water because it can form hydrogen bonds with the water molecule. Ethanol contains an O bond H, so it has that ability to form hydrogen bonds. We might have to show using a diagram how ethanol forms hydrogen bonds with water. So we draw our ethanol molecule. Our ethanol has our O bond H, which allows it to form hydrogen bonds with water. We've got our lone pairs of oxygen. So a water molecule has an O bond H, and the hydrogen of a water molecule will be strongly attracted to the lone pair of electrons on an ethanol molecule next door. Intermolecular bonding between the ethanol and the water represented here by the blue dotted lines. That would be a hydrogen bond and that allows ethanol to dissolve in water because it can form hydrogen bonds which means that it will dissolve. We could show other diagrams, but just for now, having two molecules will be fine. Um, I don't think they'll ask you to draw any more because the orientation can start to get a bit difficult. Okay, topic four, some top tips. Know the difference between inter and intramolecular and make sure you can identify the type of body from the molecules. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe. See you.